Exercise, especially strength training, is one of the most effective ways to manage blood sugar and reverse prediabetes. Based mainly on a systematic review and meta-analysis conducted by our research team, this video is going to cover strength training recommendations for people with prediabetes, and there's a link to my blog post about this topic down in the description. Dr. Elise Brown and I'm a scientist who studies how exercise can help prevent and slow the progression of type 2 diabetes. Strength training helps to reverse prediabetes by improving insulin resistance through decreasing belly fat, increasing metabolism, and activating pathways that help to remove sugar from the bloodstream without involving insulin. And there are other mechanisms too. Our research team conducted the first systematic review and meta-analysis of its kind, looking at how effective strength training programs are at improving health markers in people that were at risk for type 2 diabetes. We found that regular strength training was effective in improving blood sugar management as well as improving blood lipids, namely LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and triglycerides, and it was effective in lowering body fat percentage. Strength training was powerful enough to lower blood sugar and triglycerides without even making changes in the diet. But to have this type of effect, the strength training program has to be designed properly. The first consideration for designing a strength training program in people with prediabetes is how often that person should be exercising. The vast majority of studies included in our review had a training frequency of three days per week working each major muscle group every training session. Even though training two days a week can still be effective in lowering blood sugar as well as improving insulin resistance, training three days a week is going to have a stronger effect on muscle size, bone thickness, body fat percentage, and blood lipids. For an optimal strength training program design, at least three days a week working each major muscle group each training session is the way to go. Next we need to consider intensity as well as number of repetitions or reps. Training intensity is typically prescribed as a percentage of one repetition maximum. 1RM is the maximum amount a person can lift for one repetition using correct technique. Generally speaking, the lower the intensity, the more reps you can do. For prediabetes, training intensity should be at least 60% of 1RM for 10 to 15 repetitions, but you can expect greater decreases in A1C if the training intensities are higher at 75 to 100% of 1RM. If your strength training program includes use of resistance bands or body weight movements like push-ups and air squats, then rating of perceived exertion may be another way to prescribe intensity. You essentially want the exercise to feel like it's hard or very hard. We also need to think about what type of strength training modality to use. Most of the research studies included free weights, machine weights, or resistance bands. In our review, the only studies that resulted in lowered blood sugar or lower A1C used either free weights or resistance bands. But there is evidence in people with type 2 diabetes that using machine weights can also result in lowering A1C. The take home message is that even though the current evidence in prediabetes suggests that free weights and resistance bands can lower A1C and blood sugar, it's likely that machine weights can also have a positive effect too if other program characteristics are designed appropriately. When thinking about the exercises to program, should you program multi joint, should you program single joint, or a combination of the two? Our review suggests that most of the exercises should be multi-joint exercises like back squat, lat pull down, bench press, but also including single joint exercises like leg curl, leg extension, or lateral raises can also help to reduce blood sugar. Long-term strength training using multi-joint exercises is superior to single joint exercises in terms of increasing muscle strength and muscle size, and this is really important for physical function and metabolism in people with prediabetes. Rest periods are next on the list. How long a person rests between exercises is typically determined by the intensity of the exercise and the training goals. For example, if you're training at lighter intensities and increasing muscle size is your primary goal, the rest periods are typically going to be shorter than if you're training at higher intensities with muscle strength being your ultimate goal. Unfortunately, only a few studies in our review included rest periods, 3 out of 14 to be exact. Circuit training with 30 seconds of rest in between exercises and 60 seconds of rest between circuits, as well as conventional strength training using two minutes of rest in between exercises, both resulted in improved glycemic control. 
Generally speaking, resting for two minutes in between sets is gonna be appropriate in most cases if you're training at an intensity of about 60% of one RM for a rep range of 10 to 15 reps. But as your intensity goes up and your reps go down, you're likely gonna to have to increase your rest periods to a minimum of three minutes. Now moving on to number of sets. All of the studies in our review included between two to three sets per exercise, which aligns with the recommendations by the American Diabetes Association of between one to three sets. In a separate meta-analysis that looked at the effectiveness of strength training in people with type 2 diabetes, they found that a minimum of 21 sets per training session resulted in greater improved glycemic control compared to less than 21 sets per training session. Even though our review wasn't able to determine the optimal number of sets for improved glycemic control in people with prediabetes, it makes sense to program at least 21 sets per training session in line with what we saw with type 2 diabetes and stay in alignment with the American Diabetes Association recommendations of 1 to 3 sets per exercise. Although we didn't look at progression in our review, the guidelines by the American Diabetes Association recommend start off at a moderate intensity. If you're training at a rep range, let's say between 10 to 15 reps, once you're able to achieve 15 reps, then increase the intensity, then increase the number of sets, then in increase the number of days that you're training per week. For beginners or people that are just getting back into strength training, linear progression will work for months, meaning that every exercise session or every week, you're going to increase the intensity for each exercise just a little bit. It could be anywhere from two and a half pounds up to 10 pounds, really depending on the exercise. And this can be done for many months before advanced programming is needed. Getting the strength training programming right is key for reversing prediabetes. Even though the science is young, we have a solid starting point based on the current science. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.